Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. Uh, before, let me go to a couple of things. So we're talking about like there's all these guys that are um, getting into guns and stuff like that. Uh, I know lots of people have made videos. I'm, I'm sure you probably made a video about this, but what do you want to say to all these new gun owners out there? What would be your uh, first messages to them? We've got people buying handguns, buying rifles. You know, what would you, I, I, I want to know not only what would you like advise them to do or to, to how they should think about all of this, but what do you think they should even be buying if they're buying anything? Um, you know, get a reliable pistol above anything else you know i mean rifles are sexy and they're fun and you know they're part of our heritage and everything and um I, i'm a big believer in, in the american rifleman having written a book about it <laughs> yep yep yeah we got to talk about the book here at some point. i hope you got the book around you right there somewhere uh i may be able to, to yeah, get a yeah. copy <laughs> yeah we need to get a copy of the book here on the podcast for sure um mm -hmm. i would say you know get a pistol because if you can learn how to shoot a pistol well, all other guns are easy to shoot. You know, your submachine guns, your shotguns, your rifles. If you've got the fundamentals on a pistol, a rifle is, is very much like cheating. And so um, – and, and by the way, I mean for, for a pistol, I've always got a pistol on me. I don't mm -hmm. always have a rifle on me. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. but I do have a pistol on me, and so I think a pistol is is by far the most practical weapon that we have. I think it's very practical. I think it's very useful. I think that it's very um, – I, I think it's like your lifeline in many ways, mm -hmm. and, it, and it always has been. I mean, even on the frontier, I mean, people carried pistols, and you know, in the Wild West, people carried pistols, and people continue to carry pistols today. And I think you can defend your home with it. I think you can defend your family. I think that you can, if you have a pistol, you can get pretty much anything you want. <laughs> yeah. So, so from your from your classes and everything that you guys do, what pistols would you recommend to folks out there? You're, you're obviously seeing a lot of these things. Uh, coming through the class is there anything that you would recommend or you're trying to stay away from that specifically oh i mean get a reliable one man i mean it's like you know the internet forums are great and all this like if i want to like go into a week of depression i'll go on the online <laughs> forums and go down the black hole of abyss of bs um i mean i'm glad man i'm, I'm really really glad i mean if i wanted to you know if i wanted to like you know destroy a part of my soul i may go on there mm -hmm. um but no, I, I think you get a good brand, you know, like a Glock, a Smith and Wesson, or a, you know, H and K or something. I mean, I would stick with Glock or Smith. You know, I mean, H and K is cool and all, but Walther maybe. Uh, I, I think any one of those is going to be good. Um, I, I, I like them because they work. They continue to work. They've worked in all of our classes, and this is. I mean, I'm nearing almost a decade as a full time firearms instructor, and yeah. you know, the same. Uh, guns that worked you know back when i started continue to work the guns that that don't work continue not to work yeah is there so, anything really terrible i'm gonna i'm gonna go down that rabbit hole here forgive me reed <laughs> i have to is there anything that you've seen in the classes recently that's really super terrible and i don't know let us know what's been real about uh, it. <laughs> you know i mean generally stuff made in the middle east is gonna suck ass pardon the language um <laughs> you know it's like you know, like, like, it, yeah, like, what's, uh, what's Tyler saying right there? What did Tyler what you say, say, brother? Yeah, I mean, anything, you know, you know, South American may not be the highest quality. I mean, generally, like, you know, countries where I'd want a vacation would be countries <laughs> I would buy pistols from, you know, uh -huh. um, you know, it, it just, you know, it's amazing. I mean, American or European pistols is the way to go. I, you know, if yeah. you're in the U.S., man, you know, you've got your... Your Smith and Wessons, I think they're they they just continue to work, especially their MMP series, man. You know they just work, and Glock is what it is for a reason. Yeah. I mean, you know, if I was gonna talk about a new guy, man, like like get a Glock, be done with it, man. You know, you can you can go through all the cool little action guy 1911 stuff, or you can go to like, um, you know, you can go to. But I I mean, really, for the price, it's it's hard to beat yeah. a Smith or a Glock, you know. Yeah, really. and if money is the if money is an issue, I always tell people you can get used stuff. There's used guns out there. They're typically yeah. really good. And those companies that you mentioned, and for that matter, lots of companies will stand behind their guns even if they're used. So It's funny, Hank. You know, I just uh, I just killed a Glock 19 last week, man. I killed oh, really? it. I literally, <laughs> yeah, I literally killed it. How? Uh, shooting it. <laughs> you know, it <laughs> How many rounds? Uh, shit, maybe a buck fifty. Okay. 
and I don't mean fifteen thousand rounds. And I don't yeah, mean. Are, are you saying a hundred and fifty thousand? Yeah, yeah, I'm talking one hundred and fifty thousand. Yeah, I killed it, man. I killed it. I killed the frame. The barrel was money. In fact, I was still using the same barrel, still using the same slide. It was the frame that cracked in the back wow. lifts. You know, I killed it, and uh, I sent it in to Glock, and they had me a brand new frame in like five days. Awesome. Awesome. So, yeah. 150,000 yeah. rounds in like, you know, yeah. a couple Yeah, I mean, if it, I don't know. In a zombie apocalypse, if you got 150,000 zombies coming at you, you got bigger problems than your Glock. Uh, it's, it's crazy, man. You know, so you get one. I mean, the M&Ps, the Smith & Wesson's good, too. The Walthers make good pistols. I mean, mm -hmm. it here's the deal, man. Like, I'll tell people, look, if you can't find a holster for your pistol, there's probably a reason why, you know? Um, <laughs> it's like, it, it's, okay. it's like you know, just do it. And, I mean, I know it works, and, you know, I've seen what works. And, and you know, a good pistol is a good pistol. I mean, hey, you know, great. I mean, so you get the pistol. That's, that's, it's cold. Wonderful. that's cold, though, man. That's cold. That is a cold, that is a cold uh, read saying that you just <laughs> dropped right there if you can't find a holster for your pistol there's probably a reason yeah, let's not let's not just move away from that immediately yeah, what about can you can you make a can you make your own holster how about that i don't know I mean, maybe if you're like a leather work oh, i love it man all these kydex guys you know all these kydex guys i make kydex have you ever heard of a you know so and so have you ever heard of so and so he uses my stuff i said no you sent him one for free like mm -hmm. it's not that he uses one i mean stop yeah. trying to name drop you know right. and so are you uh, leather are you leather or kydex for your holsters where are I'm you at? kydex man you're I'm kydex. Kydex. okay yeah. mm -hmm. I, because and i don't have anything against leather holsters i just you know i mean it's not 1975, man. You know, like we got, <laughs> and I'm not against 1975. You right, know, right, 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 right. I understand. Um, I understand. It's just, I, I just, you know, I like having Kydex because you know you can sweat and it's not gonna, you know, breathe through the material and, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's it just for me, man. Like I really enjoy, uh, being able to uh, just rinse it out in the sink. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah even, a... even when I talk to, like this weekend, I'm going to go spend some time with Sam Andrews, who makes leather holsters. I've been doing uh, stuff with him here on my channel. Uh, matter of fact, our first video that we did showing him making a holster just went over a million views. My first video to go over a million views. Even he says, uh, for a lot of situations, especially training, etc., you need a kydex. You know, I mean, you can. it's easier for you to bleed on kydex <laughs> well, and I mean, wash it off. Here's how I look at training, Hank. You know, I look at training as is not like it's not a training environment. It's like it's mm -hmm. a simulation for the street. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like a lot of guys will come to class and and I'll look at them. And then one of the things I do is, and I don't like officially inspect students, but what mm -hmm. I'll do is I'll look at them and I'll see what they're running and I'll say, um, "Hey, man, is that the way you normally carry?" No, no, no. I just did it for class. And I said, "Well, the problem with a class rig is that." The only way you carry it is in class. Mm -hmm. So why don't we carry the way that we do on the street? I mean, the purpose of mm -hmm. training is to push you into the street and be able to protect yourself. Mm -hmm. So um, Kydex for me is good because it's durable. It fits the gun very well. It never wears out. Mm -hmm. The mouth of the holster stays open. Um, a quality one like, say, JM Kydex or Keeper's Concealment isn't going – and, and by the way, I don't get like paid by these guys. It's just what mm -hmm. I use. I, bought, mm -hmm. I buy the holsters. I don't get comped. You know, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I buy their stuff because these guys are shooters. You know, um, Tony at JM Kydex is a shooter. You know, Spencer Keepers down there in Oklahoma, he's a shooter, man. Mm -hmm. He's a hell of a shooter. I've never met him, but I've, I've corresponded. He's an awesome guy. Um, and so that's what I carry. You know, right now I'm carrying a Keepers, you know, and I'm carrying mm -hmm. my Glock 26, you know. And so uh, okay. it, it's like, you know, it's just I, I think that, that there's there's people that shoot that use holsters and then there's people that, that don't shoot and make holsters, and you can really tell the difference. Like, I can tell the difference between a guy that really shoots and makes a holster. Except, dude, dudes send me stuff all the time, like unsolicited, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, it happens to all of us. I mean, people yeah. people always send in me things like that. Yeah. And I'm like, and I'm grateful. It's mm -hmm. not like I'm, I'm blowing them off, or it's not that, you know, I'm not appreciative, but I want to use holsters from guys that shoot at a high level. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're... And, and please don't take this the wrong way. I'm like the last person in the world that thinks that you need to be a master or grandmaster shooter to have an opinion. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, when you shoot, you know, I, I've shot so much. And for me, it's not even about the number of rounds that I shoot. For me, it's about the quality. And, and, and it's not even about my shooting. It's how can I articulate to other people um, the most effective way to get the information that's in my head into their uh, action, mm -hmm. right? And so um, – 
you know, I know guys that, that shoot that if I can tell whether a guy shoots a lot or carries a lot by the holster that he makes. And guys like Tony at JM Kydex and guys like Spencer Keepers down there in Oklahoma, those guys are shooters. Like Spencer's, you know, is a, is a he's like a straight up gunslinger, man. So, you know, um, he can shoot. <laughs> so it, all these guys, you know, I understand it. And so. I like a high grip. I like a high index. I like quality, durability. I like stuff that's not going to crack or warp. Um, and I've been carrying, you know, JM Kydex and, Kemp- and Keeper's Concealment now for quite a long time on a daily basis, and I've never had a single issue. Okay. Let me ask you this about the holster before we get off the holster thing. You just said that you, you had a Glock break at 150,000 rounds. Um, the holster that you were using on that, how many, how long did that holster go? years <laughs> you know years? and okay. it wasn't yeah and the holster wasn't the issue it was uh mm-hmm. it was a, i mean the holster i mean you know i i always have um backups and several of them i mean i have like three or four holsters mm-hmm. that i can plug in any time that's not going to change my grip angle that's not going to change the index on my pistol mm-hmm. it's always going to be the same so you know it's it's like I, i'm i try to stay consistent like i find one pistol and then train with it and get really good with it um rather than jump around from different types of pistols. Like, I mm-hmm. can tell the difference. Today I shot a revolver, my backup gun. Mm-hmm. I did some backup gun, because 38 Special's cheap right now. Mm-hmm. And uh, so so I did some backup gun work, and when I went back to my normal uh, pistol, my, my uh, when I went back to my normal uh, Glock, my my presentation was a little bit off, man. Mm-hmm. I could tell where it's normally real razor sharp. Mm-hmm. So you know, so changing stuff around and shooting a bunch of different kind of guns, I think that's very detrimental to people, and um, they need to understand how detrimental it is. Um, you know, for me to, to get up and and shoot, you know, if if I don't shoot for maybe a two or three or four day period, I lose about ten percent of my skill. That's how sharp I like to keep my scalpel. Yeah, um, um, it's definitely detrimental to me being yeah. a YouTube uh, guy. You know, pretending I know something about guns on YouTube, which I'm definitely pretending um, like no, 99% no, no, no. of the time. Uh, because because we're shooting all these different things, I think, yeah, if you if if you don't have to do that, I agree with you. Have that, that one gun or a few guns that you know you spend time. And I know something you told me is like shoot on paper a lot. Um, which I don't do, right? You know, yeah. For expediency, expediency or whatever, and I've noticed, yeah, not shooting on paper, getting real bad. Well, you, um, the original uh, vein on this on this uh, thread that we're talking about is is for new shooters. My mm-hmm. my advice would be to to get one gun, stay with it, get really good with it, you know, and, and stop being this guy that does the firearms carousel. You know, I'm not against that. You know, I'm not against it at all. But it, it's good to experiment. But eventually you're going to have to get to the point where you settle on a, on something, where you settle on a gun, you settle on a system, you settle on a methodology of practice and training, and then you're going to have to roll with that. Because if we if we keep changing things, if we keep doing that, you're going to be slower, you're not going to be as good, um, you're not going to shoot to the degree that you, do, that you need to shoot to. And so my whole thing is, okay, I want people to be able to have the subconscious repetitions for when they get attacked on the street that they can draw, know their front side is there, see it, and then work that trigger so that they can make it home to their family. So, you know, for me, a good holster goes a long way, and that includes carrying your gun every day, your pistol. Mm -hmm. I I love rifles. I mean, hell, my emblem has a guy with a flintlock in the Cumberland Gap. Yeah. Um, But, you know, what what I think is very practical for the overall majority of people is going to be to carry a quality pistol that you can bet your life on and, um, you know, carry a gun and practice with it. That way you have the same presentation, you have the same sight picture, uh, you have the same index, you have the same holster position. And, you know, if your holster is moving around all over the place, you need to get a new one. The holster should stay put. It should stay exactly where it is each and every time. Like my holster doesn't move. Yeah. This and a, a good belt is part of that combo too. Well, Big time, sure. man. Big Good time, belt, big, big time. What, I don't know if there's any specific kind of belts or whatever, but uh, where are you out on belts? You know, yeah, do, you, do you use leather? Do you use like some kind of uh, scuba webbing, man? Scuba webbing. webbing. Okay. I, mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean the, the the belt that I use, and there are many good ones out there. But um, y- you know, I, I use a a uh, Aries uh, belt, mm-hmm. and it's got a nice square buckle. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll just show you guys. I mean, I you know I've got this. Uh, I've got this Aries belt okay. right here. You can see the nice square buckle, mm-hmm. and you can see that it's a nice holster. And you can see that it that it just I've got a nice high index on this right here, so that it comes out. And so it's it's every time yeah. I go, 
And every time I'm explosive, right. I'm right there, man. Yeah. I mean, I'm explosive to the gun. I mean, it's quick. Yeah. I mean, if Reed. you know, just so you draw, you know. Yeah. I'm sorry about the gun. I shouldn't have shown it yeah. live, but it's a holster, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um. So okay, let's uh let's move on from that. <laughs> yeah. Um. Here's the other thing. Okay. So here's what I wanted to ask you. Let's say we move past that, right? We move past the. Oh, well, actually, you you were talking about um you were talking about your backup. What was your backup before we move on from that to um to to rifles? What's your backup that you use? I carry typically I'll carry a J frame Smith in 38. Mm -hmm. Okay, J J frame Smith. That's been been your backup for a long time. You haven't switched out of that. No, I, okay. I carry that as a backup because it's you know it's gonna give me. It's gonna be five shots at 38, and um, I know it's gonna go off, and and I know that I can hit it 25 yards. I mean, I can make headshots with it at 25 yards, and and it's like for people out there that are looking for a backup gun, what you need to understand is a backup gun shouldn't be a compromise. A backup gun should be a gun that you can shoot well mm. enough that's gonna be able to to save your life. So for me, a five shot 38, and I'm running good ammo through it. I mean, I'm running spear gold dot, so. Um, for me, it, it's it's about being able to, to hit the vitals or hit the central nervous system, you know? Okay. Um, so then let's move on to the rifle thing. So lots of people are buying rifles also, right? I think there's more folks buying handguns, so that's good. Rifle, yeah. what would be your recommendation to folks uh, with rifles? And uh, we definitely don't need to see it. We, you know, no, 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 yeah. no, it's all good. <laughs> hey, I figured we, I figured we could toe the line on the envelope. Why yeah, not? yeah. You know? Okay, we'll it, see. But it's all good. It's good info. So, yeah. so what do you think about rifles for the folks out there that, you know, there's people out there for their first time getting a rifle. What should they think about? You know, I think there's people thinking like AK, AR. Should I get a 308? Should I, you know, should I do this thing? Should I, should I get six five Creedmoor, five five six, two two three? It gets, oh, there's, there's lots of options nowadays in, in the world that we live in. So what would you say about that? Um, yeah, you know, generally speaking, I mean, if, if you live out rural, I mean, an AK would do you well because you don't have to worry about overpenetration. You know, you don't have to worry about your neighbors. You don't mm -hmm. have to worry about, like, you know, putting a round into your neighbor's house. or anything. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, if you live in the city or the suburbs, man, you know, you may want to reconsider that because, you know, the 30 cal stuff is going to penetrate. I mean, that's mm -hmm. what it's designed to do. Mm -hmm. um, I'm looking at like I'm looking at people that uh, you know if you live in a neighborhood and you got a neighbor's house close by you know you probably want a five five six AR mm -hmm. and I'm not I'm not a gimmicky guy man you know mm -hmm. I I like uh, I like stuff that's been proven to work that continues to work mm -hmm. that that is money um, for me that's an AR and five five six and I really don't deviate from that if I'm okay. gonna you know use that for home defense because the and in my book I mentioned that. You know, the 5.56 has been proven to penetrate even less than handgun rounds do inside structures. And this is not only the FBI that's done this research, but it's multiple law enforcement agencies across the country. Okay, is that like a specific kind of 5.56? Are you, you know, are you um, chambering it in, in something like hollow point or something defensive? Any of them. Okay. okay. Any of them. It certainly doesn't penetrate any more mm -hmm. than pistol rounds, and and probably it, it. In fact, I got a video about it where I had an old house on my property, and uh, we shot a lot of the rounds into the house before we demolished it, and mm -hmm. um, and the five five six penetrated the walls the least of any gun. Hmm. Okay. It went through. I've I've got to go back and look at that video. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually a few years ago, maybe like four years ago. Oh, okay. All right. I've got yeah. to go back and see that. So, okay, cool. So five five six. That's all you need. Uh, I, I, I do 300 blackout. Do you, are you for or against that? You know, and I value your opinion. I know you're the kind of person who's going to say what you think regardless. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's great, but I would just get an AK. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's a good thing for the AK. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.